America has a bit of a history when it comes to invading other countries. You have Vietnam, Korea, Iraq, Russia. Wait, Russia? Yes, da, Russia. In the summer of 1918, as the First World War was raging across, well, the entire world, the USA decided to invade Russia. Why? Well, Russia was in the middle of a bloody civil war, and the Red Communists, the Bolsheviks, were winning. They had signed a peace treaty with the Central Powers, Germany, Austria, Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, so they could concentrate on defeating their enemy, the White Army, a motley collection of Russian monarchists, republicans, capitalists and what have you, united only by their hatred for communism. The peace treaty meant that Germany could redeploy its troops from the Eastern Front in Russia to the Western Front in France, something the Allies, which were Britain, France and the USA, weren't too keen on. Meanwhile, Russia was descending into near anarchy, with multiple factions fighting, raiding, allying, betraying and generally messing each other up. There were your common bandits, a smattering of petty warlords, marauding Cossacks and various units of the Russian army that swapped sides depending on which way the blood, or vodka, was flowing. There was also a legion of 40,000 Czechoslovakian soldiers. Never mind that Czechoslovakia as a country didn't even exist yet. But what on earth was this legion doing in the middle of Siberia in 1918? Trying to get to Germany the long way round, apparently. You see, the Legion started as a group of Czech and Slovak radicals determined to free their people from the Austro-Hungarian Empire and to create their own country, Czechoslovakia. Allied with the Russians, they had been fighting the Germans on the Russian front. However, the Russian Revolution and the German peace deal changed all that. The Legion suddenly found itself deep in enemy territory, with no friends or allies for thousands of miles. At that point, the most reasonable thing to do was clear. They had to march across the largest country on earth, traversing some of the most inhospitable terrain imaginable, whilst one of the bloodiest civil wars in history was raging all around them. Now, from among their many options, they decided to take the train, and they also decided to keep it. For the next two years, the Czechoslovak Legion controlled the most important east-to-west route across Russia, the Trans-Siberian Railway guarding it and allying themselves with the White Army. The rest of the world, meanwhile, was nervously watching as Russia tore itself apart, and they thought something must be done. And so they did something. For Britain and France, that something was simple. Invade. So, as the First World War drew to a close, Britain and France put together an expedition to Arhangelsk, in the northwest of Russia, near Finland, to go and do something there. Meanwhile, in the East, the Chinese and Japanese decided they should do something too. The Japanese sent in 70,000 men, while the Chinese only sent in 2,000. Both were there to do something, but the Japanese did quite a bit more somethings than the Chinese. Crucially, though, Britain and France, who were running a little low on soldiers, what with World War I and all, managed to persuade the USA to get in on the act. President Woodrow Wilson supported the Arhangelsk expedition with around 5,000 troops. But he also decided to throw in a second expedition. After all, when America decides to do something, it absolutely has to be seen as doing something better than anyone else is doing something. So, Wilson sent another 8,000 soldiers to Vladivostok, the main Pacific Ocean port in eastern Russia through which the Japanese were also doing something. Now, the problem when lots of people decide to do something is that, inevitably, that means that multiple things will be done. And when you try to do multiple things, or anything really, during a civil war in Russia, things can get a little complicated. The Arhangelsk expedition was under the overall command of the British, and they had two major objectives. One, preventing the Allied military supplies in Arhangelsk, shipped over there in 1917 to support the good Russians against the bad Germans from now falling into the hands of the bad Russians who were fighting against the new good Russians. Two, to rescue the Czechoslovak Legion, which was lost somewhere in Russia, perhaps on a train. Three, to restore the Eastern Front against the Germans with the Czechoslovak Legion and the White Army. Luckily, the surrender of the Germans in November 1918 simplified this goal. And four, the unwritten but ultimate goal to stop the Bolsheviks from winning the civil war and ruling Russia. Only Winston Churchill was public with that intent, saying that the goal of the British expedition was to strangle the Bolshevik state at birth, or something like that. 
As you can see, by the time the expedition had arrived, its objectives had doubled, and unfortunately the Bolsheviks had already seized the military supplies and ran off with them. The expedition spent a few fruitless months chasing the Bolsheviks around, but ultimately were defeated by something that no one could have ever predicted, the Russian winter, and so they were forced to evacuate the next year. Meanwhile, at the other end of Russia, General Graves arrived in Vladivostok with 8,000 American soldiers and similar instructions from President Wilson. They were there to protect the American military supplies and to help the Czechoslovak Legion to safety. Graves, however, decided not to read between the lines. So instead of trying to hinder the Bolsheviks and help the White Army, which was the universally understood but unspoken goal of the campaign, General Graves decided that their purpose was to help the Russian people, how very noble of him. This resulted in quite a lot of tension with the Japanese, French, British, Chinese, natives, Cossacks and others, all of whom were on the same page that communist blood had to flow. The only thing Graves achieved was to keep the Trans-Siberian Railway open, which did help the White Army's retreat. It probably wasn't intentional, though. Graves and his troops were called home in 1920 when questions were raised in America as to what they were actually doing halfway across the world. The Czechoslovak Legion left at the same time, returning home to the newly created Czechoslovakia. At the end of the day, the expeditions were pointless because, spoiler alert, the White Army was defeated by the Communists soon after. And that, my friends, concludes that time the US invaded Russia. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time for the next exciting installation of SideQuest. Ah, yes. Hmm.